electromagnetic fields are created by moving charged particles. Even the magnet on your fridge is magnetic because it contains electrons that are constantly moving around inside it. But the first indication that moving electric charges cause magnetic fields was discovered in the early 19th century by Hans Christian Oyster. During an experiment, he observed that when an electric current flowed through a wire, a magnetic needle of nearby compass would show deflection. When the current was turned off, the compass would go back to its original north-south alignment with the Earth's magnetic field. And since the electrons all move through the wire in one direction, there is a well-defined magnetic field surrounding the wire. The conclusion from this observation was that the electrons moving through the wire were creating a magnetic field that didn't exist when the current was turned off. This means that we effectively have a magnet that can be turned on and off with the help of a switch. Now, this discovery had huge implications in practical applications. Hence, the unit of magnetic field strength was named Oyster in his honor. But if wires are so magnetic, why don't we see objects flying across the room and sticking to them? Well, it's because the magnetic field just isn't very strong at everyday levels of electric current. Well, now that we have established the connection between electricity and magnets, let's conduct a hypothetical experiment using a giant conductor through which electric current is passed and is therefore now a magnet. First, we'll try to find out if any kind of magnetic force is exerted by this conductor in the first place. So, we take a white sheet of paper and place the magnet in the center of it. Now, we take some iron filings and sprinkle it around the magnet. Very gently, tap the white paper, but don't disturb the arrangement completely. You'll notice that the iron filings arrange themselves around the magnet in a pattern like this. So, why does the conductor have this effect on the iron filings? That's because a magnetic field is present around the magnet. And this field is basically the area around the magnet where the effect of magnetic force can be felt. This force exerted on the iron filings by the magnet is what results in this pattern. Well, the lines along which the filings arrange themselves are called the magnetic field lines. Now that we know the pattern in which these magnetic field lines exist around the magnet, we can even draw them ourselves and find out their direction as well. Let's represent the conductor only as a magnet without considering the connecting wires and place it in an open space. Now we take a compass and start out next to the North Pole. Observe the orientation of the needle. We see that the needle points straight out and away from the magnet because we're at the North Pole. And as you already know, like poles of a magnet repel each other. Okay, let's start moving in the direction that the needle points. And as we get farther away from the pole, the needle starts to turn. And we would eventually walk all the way around the magnet and arrive at the South Pole. Here, the needle would point directly into the magnet because we're now at the South Pole and opposite poles of a magnet attract each other. Drawing the path that we walked would give us a diagram that looked something like this. Now, if we repeated this experiment several more times, but starting from slightly different locations, our diagram would eventually look like this. Now, each one of the lines is called a field line and it shows the direction of the magnetic field at various locations around the magnet. Now, apart from this, the diagram also tells us a couple of different things. First, it shows us that the direction of the magnetic field is always considered to be coming out of the North Pole and going into the South Pole. This is really just a convention, but it is universally followed. Inside the magnet, the direction of the field lines is from its South Pole to its North Pole. Thus, 
the magnetic field lines are seen as closed curves, something like this. The second thing is, is that the spacing of the lines indicates the strength of the magnetic field. Now we can see that the field lines are mostly closely spaced near the poles of the magnet, where the field is the strongest and spread farther apart as you move away from the poles. Also, no two field lines are found to cross each other because if they did, it would mean that at the point of intersection, the compass needle would point towards two different directions, which is obviously not possible. All right, we have already seen how the flow of electric charges produces magnetic field around a conductor, causing it to behave like a magnet. But what if we change the shape of this conductor? What if I took this conductor and held it straight up or bent it like this to turn it into a circular loop? Or maybe, you know, I can just turn it over and over again to make multiple loops like this. Well, let me tell you that in each of these cases, there's going to be a different kind of magnetic field that is induced because of electric current flowing through the conductor. So, Let's look at these one by one. So let's begin with a straight current carrying conductor. Magnetic field due to a straight current carrying conductor. By now, we know that the magnetic field lines have both magnitude and direction, which makes it obvious that even the magnetic field generated due to the straight current carrying conductor will have both a magnitude as well as direction. We now see how the strength of this magnetic field depends on various factors. Also, we learn how to find the direction of magnetic field due to a straight current carrying conductor using the right hand thumb rule. All right, let's say we have a straight wire. And as we can see here, we can connect both its ends to the terminals of a battery. This way, we allow current to pass through it. And we know that every time current flows through a conductor, a magnetic field is generated. Now the magnetic field, therefore, generated by this current carrying conductor can be found out if we simply take a cardboard, hold it horizontally and allow the conductor to pass through it. Then, like we did for the bar magnet, we can sprinkle some iron filings on the cardboard and just gently tap it. We'll see that the iron filings arrange themselves in concentric circles around the conductor as shown. So, we can conclude that the magnetic field lines around a straight current carrying conductor are in a form of concentric circles whose center lies on the wire. But these magnetic field lines also have a direction that depends on the direction of the current flowing through the conductor. And this can be found out by the right hand thumb rule. Did you know that when you use your right hand to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down sign, you're using a physics trick? We call it the right hand thumb rule. To determine the orientation of magnetic field generated by a current carrying wire. Now, if the direction of current is known, the rule states that if the thumb of the right hand points along the direction of the current, then the curled fingers give the direction of the magnetic field due to the current. Now, this tells us that if the current through the conductor is from the direction from down to up, as we can see here, the magnetic field therefore would be along the direction of the curled fingers in an anti-clockwise direction. Now, when we reverse the direction of the current, then the thumb pointing downwards depicts the flow of the current from top to bottom. In this case, the direction of the magnetic field will be along the direction of the curled fingers, which are now curled in the clockwise direction. Thus, the direction of magnetic field around a current carrying conductor depends on the direction of the current flowing through it. 
Tutimate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.